So folks, welcome back. We're at Advancing Pre-Construction. Now we cannot come to Advancing Pre-Construction and not have these two guys on the Pre-Construction podcast. Amar and Kevin are with Windover Construction. Now to give you an idea of what these guys are about, Amar's just come back from Australia, Melbourne. He is the 2019 Innovator of the Year for Autodesk and they continually win awards for being an innovator, innovation for Autodesk. They're incredible people. Amr, thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Kevin. Amr, if I could just touch on you first. Give us, a, give us an idea what you, you were doing in the wonderful Australia. Well, uh, first, Australia was a wonderful, fantastic place with great people, really uh, broad-minded, amazing people met there. Uh, I was doing the keynote for the Construction Innovation Forum uh, for Australia. It was very well attended to share ideas about the mindset of innovation and how we can transform our industry forward using innovative solutions and using today's technology with tomorrow's vision. Um, uh, Autodesk team did a great uh, time there. We had uh, met a lot of uh, prefab uh, factories and uh, architects from uh, around the globe actually in Australia. So it was great to be back also. Yeah, and what was the, what was the big takeaways? What was your your kind of presentation about? What were you speaking about? And what was the the main sol- problem you were trying to solve? So I was talking about how we use today's technology, uh, whatever it is available, laser scanning, drones, uh, uh, pre pre construction uh, tools. Today's technology was tomorrow's vision to transform our industry because we. We, at Wendover, our vision to technology is more than the tool, it's more than the drone or the laser scanner or even the software. It goes beyond that with a little bit of creativity on how we can use these technologies to offer a solution, tech first based solution to tackle the challenges on job sites. So it, it, the power of the technology goes really beyond the tools in our hands today. Uh, and we can mention, uh, we would love to discuss with you now and with Kevin all the different examples of projects we did. For example, we just transformed the building of uh, uh, affordable housing for a project that won the Autodesk Excellence Award for 2022. Uh, how we used uh, uh, pre planning and pre construction, as well as VR and uh, laser scanning to make sure that new elements will fit perfectly in existing conditions building to mitigate risk. It's all about mitigating risk and having no surprises on site. Love it. Kevin, how lucky are you to have this guy in the company? Chief Innovation Officer at your at your fingertips. I need him more than he needs me for sure. <laughs> Love it. So tell me about that project, Kevin, in particular from a pre-construction perspective. How important was all of that, I mean, we, I know we talked about the, the decisions within the design phase. Winning that award at Autodesk, I mean, what was it like on the pre-con site? I mean, we're uni- using innovation every day. And like we were talking about a little bit earlier, it's everything from scanning of an existing building to doing um, 3D printing to using um, prefabrication. It's everything that gets incorporated into our pre-construction in order for clients to be able to make informed decisions. Um, We use model-based estimating, so we take either models that we've received from architects, or sometimes even at the early, early stages, we work with Amr, and Amr creates that model for us to be able to take um, quantities from and piece that all together. The 3D scanning thing is one I want to touch on, right? Because I, I, if I'm if I'm listening to if someone's listening to this, the, the first thing I think of is operations and project delivery when it comes to 3D scanning. Tell me how important it is in the pre-construction side and how it how valuable it is when getting through those decision making at design. It's, it's so important in the beginning and the front end, especially if you're doing a renovation type of project, to be able to go in there, scan it, um, and it speeds things up as well. Having that own in-house resource. Amr goes out there in the day. Two days later, we have a full model that we can kind of work around. You know, we're getting limited information from the architect as far as plans are concerned, which is fine. We recognize that early stage and what it entails, and our clients do as well. And they don't want to sometimes put that investment in yet until they get a better idea or is around the cost, Makes right? Sense, yeah. So we use our in-house capabilities to go there produce, even after after Armour's scans, we're able to produce a set of documents, existing condition plans, that we can then go and mark up, um, use that and give it logic, and apply that to our estimating. And therefore, at the end of the day, we have a number that makes 
logical sense. Yeah, of course. And then, of course, the, the, the idea that the 3D scan you've got, communication with the client is key and collaboration and decision-making at design stage. And Amir, are you seeing a lot of companies, I mean, you've obviously been all over the world. You mentioned people from Singapore, we're in Australia, you're going to California, you, you're, you're, you're at, at, at the forefront of all of this. Is everybody using 3D scanning to get this kind of information and using it within pre-construction? So I expected the use of laser scans to, to spread more, but the, the key part in, at, uh, at Wendover here is the mindset of innovation. It's not only the VDC team producing those very highly accurate scans, but it's also embedded into the workflow. So Ke Kevin's team, great innovative team of uh, uh, estimating team, who can really take that data and really apply it. Same as our great superintendents in the field. A project manager, so it's embedded. So it's a VDC team is a catalyst to to provide this high, high early accurate data QAQC overlays. For example, that project we just mentioned that won the award, uh, it had an existing historic building that after after demo we scanned it to make sure we communicate the findings in real time and QAQC overlays. So in case we find any discrepancies, it gets communicated in real time. So the team manufacturing all the the steel beams or the new design elements know the accurate dimension so we don't have surprises on site. So how that, uh, how that happens? It's not only the VDC team taking that decision, it's also a great superintendent communicating in real time to the VDC team or the technology team, guys, here is the demo, let's do the scans. Same thing with the project management, same thing with the pre-construction team, Kevin's team, planning for all these steps ahead during pre-construction which you play, really mitigate risk towards the end of the project. And as Amr touched upon, it's, it's really a mindset, right? You have to be able to have that. And as you can tell with Amr's high energy, it's infectious across <laughs> our company, right? So anybody that Amr goes and touches with in our organization, they're looking for ways to incorporate that innovation, right? Whether it's um, scanning an existing site for where the underslab piping is going, or if it's in-house for estimating on the pre-construction side, maybe we're thinking about that we need to do a mock-up and maybe we do a virtual one first. You know, it's things like that that it has to be in your... I love it. Quick question on the 3D scanning. How early do you do 3D scanning? Is it pre-bid? Is it germ bid? It's, it's sometimes these days, it's the first thing we do. That's what I was going to say. Because it's a base for even, we give it to the architects or the design team members or we use it in meetings very early on to even have discussions around programming. Um, or it could be that we go and do, if there's no building there, we go and s fly the drone to get a layout of the area and we'll use that and we're talking about where the building placement should be, you know? Because compared to ground uh, uh, survey points where uh, our drone is actually more than an eye in the sky, it has LIDAR into it and it get ground control points to lock the dimensions very accurate. So in a, in a half an hour flight and some processing in recap or autodesk recap, we can have uh, accurate data of the site and we feed with uh, Earth's work analysis, which we do a lot with Kevin's, team, with, our, with Kevin's team, our estimating team. We can feed them with Earth's work analysis quickly so we know cut and fill analysis and the good planning for Earth's work. It's, it's a huge benefit to us as you can hear and, and tell and I think Put on, putting those things to real life, everyday use, that's why it is our mindset that it's always there. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, I can imagine it. I want to touch briefly on something else we discussed, the VR and AR. When, when, when you get that and you have the VR and AR, again, I, I think more of just before delivery, just before execution project delivery, maybe a project manager, superintendent, but having the client able to get those, uh, you call them Oculus, uh, the, the glasses, having them able to do that and make decisions there and then on color palettes, on size of corridors, hallways, how important is that and, and how quickly can you run through design having and that sort of tool? That's, it's a huge, and again, we're a resource to the project team. We're an advisor to our client, but if we can expedite, expedite our way through things to be able to make it move it quicker along, then we're going to be able, we're going to do that. So that instance is where we always need to look for cost savings ideas. Um, sometimes if we're making suggestions about um, ceiling types, exposed versus enclosed, flooring, patterns, things like that, 
for the client to be able to see that, be able to stand in a room, get a depth perception of if there's going to be a ceiling or no ceiling is huge. And then they can make the decision right away. Yeah, cool, Kevin. And then uh, from your side, Amir, the VR? Ke Kevin is bringing up a great point about the VR. Uh, for example, there were two projects that Kevin and I worked on. One of them was a bank and the other one was a Cape and uh, YMCA. It's a, 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 a project there. And uh, we had work, work, uh, work sessions with the architect, with the owner, and they selected all the materials in VR so they can check all the materials in a very immersive experience. We put it applied very quickly, all the real materials in 3D Studio Max, and you can really see all the different materials and get a sense of feel. And that all helped with higher satisfaction, higher satisfaction at the end of the projects uh, uh, with the client. We actually also took VR and augmented reality to another level to assist with assembly. Speaking of Australia, we collaborated with a a uh, fellow uh, resident at Autodesk Technology Center, where we are resident at Autodesk, testing the future of construction solutions in Boston, uh, called Phonogram Twin Build. They are based okay. in Melbourne, okay. Australia, where I just spoke. Nice. And they actually developed the Phonogram, which is actually, you know, it's like assembling furniture without having to look outside of the task in hand. It, you, we, we created prefab elements, trusses, thousands of them. Each, each truss is made out of eight pieces. So you end up with a pile on site of trusses you need to assemble. So with the phonogram, we were able to guide the assembly very quickly using mixed reality HoloLens so we can assemble it with two people in three days versus four people for seven days. So that's increasing efficiency. For years, we've been using uh, mixed reality to overlay buildings, how it's going to look and show clients how it's going to look. Now we are actually pushing the limit by helping us assemble, put, empower our field team to, to have this tool so they can expedite and increase efficiencies in assembly. I mean, a lot of the stuff in construction is repetitive, right? It's almost like building walls, they're repetitive. This was up at a corner on a, around the perimeter of a building. So building that bracket on the ground, a little bit of a safer environment for a lot of folks, but then having the augmented reality, you, you put the, the goggles on and it gives you the almost step-by-step -step instructions on how to build it. Unbelievable. And then these, those get fabricated and put on the building. But I'm thinking as you're running through this and Windover and like over the last 10 or 15 years, as you're adapting all these technologies, surely change orders have just come right down. And especially when you're, when you're thinking about the detail of the color palettes, selecting the materials, like Amar just said, the change orders must be non-existent. Well, I mean, they're always going to be there. <laughs> Never going to be non-existent. Wishful thinking. <laughs> what it does is it prevents a lot of risk moving forward. Yeah. And I think that that's a lot of our professionals, a lot of our peers. That's what that's what we're looking to do is prevent risk for our clients. Brilliant. And how obviously we talked to your, your president Rangi. How important is it coming from the top, being able to do all of this? I mean, the way the way you should run. I know Wendover aren't the, the biggest company, but you keep winning awards. You keep. You keep pushing the boundaries of excellence within technology and construction, but how important is it to have the main guy bought it? So our culture is embedded from our CEO to everyone is a mindset of that our innovation and our solution is really providing value for our client, whether it's a saving on cost, whether it's increasing safety, which is very important for us at Wendover, as well as providing value for the client. For example, we had we used additive manufacturing, 3D printing, to help replicate facade elements uh, with the 3D printing. We had multiple options with traditional methods and with the innovation. We found that this would provide high quality product because you're using laser scan data to 3D print something to the millimeter accurate versus the traditional method that will miss some of that data. That beautiful things made by hand a hundred years ago, we can create exact replicas with it using laser scan and 3D printing. So that mindset that we can show the client that that will work and do it because we, our culture is about taking intelligent risk, our core values at Wendover, and build great things with great people. And also, we like to stop testing, start trying, yeah. start building. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing. All these technologies we apply to the project. Doesn't have to, it's, we could start small, a smaller project. But when it proves it works and provide value to client, we start making it uh, across the board for our project. You, meant, you touched on something there, digital fabrication. Do you think that's far away? 
It's not far away. We actually were, uh, Stuart Murr, our CEO, and myself were speaking at uh, Advancing Pre uh, Fabrication two months ago here yeah. in Phoenix. And it was amazing to see we presented our solutions that we collaborated with Howick in New Zealand, for example, and we do a lot of great uh, new work at Autodesk Technology Center using additive manufacturing, even 3D printing with metal. Uh, with the stainless steel, mm -hmm. uh, but also it was great to see the rest of the industry is trying to push prefabrication. So we really, and our partners at Autodesk, really we, we collaborate together to really um, take the BIM data and the great pre-construction data into making it's of things. Nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, And uh, you know, Wendover is almost the go-to for modular construction in New England area. Right. So we do a lot of modular, been doing it successfully. We built the in-house expertise, great superintendents, great project managers, great pre-construction teams and the VDC team to make sure it's fully coordinated and delivered with no risk. Yeah, I love the passion. You can see it when you're talking, both of you guys, and I can understand why one went over going so well. Quick question, Amir. What excites you most now about what's coming with through, through technology? What's the one thing that you think, if that goes well and the technology advances, it could be a game changer? It is to provide, we, at Wendover, we are really excited about providing affordable housing. Uh, more affordable, even more affordable, maybe with prefab, with uh, modular construction. Wendover right now, uh, Kevin is working on the, it would be the largest mass timber project uh, in the North Shore, uh, in uh, North America. Um, uh, Kevin can talk to more about, about it for us. So we are excited about mass timber, more uh, the sustainability aspect of it. So at, the, when, at the construction industry, we have a historic opportunity to make a difference to CO2 emissions because we really build the buildings, which is the biggest. We can really make a, make a difference using technology and sustainability, uh, sustainable materials as well. I mean, we're under the mindset of looking at the future and making things better. And how do you do that? You know, it's in our, our foundation of that is around innovation. Innovation is like he's been, like Amr's been talking about, is a multitude of different things. And all those things we're utilizing on our everyday pre-construction. To be honest, I can't imagine not having that as a resource now after having used it for so many years. Brilliant. And you, you mentioned innovation there, specifically pre-construction. What excites you, Kevin? Um, working with this guy, seeing what he's coming up <laughs> with next. Um, you know, and I'm, like I said with you know, it's, it's about making things better. And for us, I mean, the business is stressful, right? There's a lot of stuff that goes on. We're constantly up against deadlines, um, constantly looking for the right people. And I'm, this brings excitement to what we're doing every day. And the opportunities are endless. Brilliant. And j just quickly, have you seen anything interesting here th at, at the conference that you think, you know what, that, that piece of tech could, could slide nicely into win over? Everybody here is talking about the future. Yeah. You know, what they have that as an industry, not even just us, that they're able to bring to be able to move things in the right direction. Yeah. And I think just for us as a group and organization, um, that's always moving in the right direction. Brilliant. And I, I can't leave you guys without asking you about AI. What, what do you see? Have you, have you ever thought about integrating the likes of ChatGPT into your processes, workflows? What's, what's AI going to bring to the construction world? I, I really see that AI is, re we already, like at Autodesk Technology Center, we use a lot of robotics, uh, robotic arms that can take the BIM data to making of things. I see AI as a great opportunity not to replace somebody's work, but actually make us, help us focus on what really matters, which is coming up with great ideas. And there's a knowledge, like, uh, like Kevin has great pre-construction knowledge. So let's focus on that without having to worry about uh, techni little technical things. So that's the opportunity I see in AI. It can also help us, we are working with, with cities and with other institutions to help expedite processes that otherwise without AI, it's gonna take much longer. Brilliant. Well, listen, man, this has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Now, if anybody's watching this and they said, listen, I love what Kevin and Amir are talking about, I have a little follow-up question. What, is there a way that we can kind of get in touch with you or, or, or maybe even drop you a message on LinkedIn? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're both on LinkedIn. They can go to uh, Windover's website, 
uh, we're based in Massachusetts and and we always li love to make friends and uh, it's all about really events like this is all about making friends sharing ideas so we can really together Buja industry forward and that's a great educational content and thank you so much for having us uh, you you really focus on uh, on bringing ideas and uh, on technical things so i really like watching your uh, show wonderful thank you very much and as always folks in the show notes i'll put linked uh, link both kevin and Amir's linkedin profile and also the details for wendover website <laughs>